Hey guys, it's Caleb. welcome back. So in today's video, I've got a couple of finger lime trees that I wanted to bring you along and show you, and just talk about a few of the tips of how you can successfully grow these in containers. But before we get into that, if you guys haven't heard of an Australian finger lime before, these are native to Australia. You can find them growing in the wild in Queensland and New South Wales in their humid and subtropical rainforests. And so that means that they do require some good heat and they don't really like cold conditions or especially frost. So if you live in an area that does get frost like I do, growing them in a container is a good option that you can actually protect them in the winter, bring them just undercover. I've just had these actually against my house here and there's a bit of an awning to protect them from that frost. But basically these produce an awesome little fruit that's about the size of your finger. It's green on the outside but when you cut it open inside you'll find these little beads and as you eat them they actually burst in your mouth and you can actually hear them popping away as you eat them and they've got like a lime flavoured juice on the inside. Really really tasty and kind of an unusual type of fruit or something that tastes a lot like lime. These are often referred to as lime caviar and they're used in savoury dishes and different gourmet dishes in restaurants and things like that. And they're just a type of fruit that you really can't come across very easily. So growing them yourself is obviously a really good way to have some good fruits going in the future. And these are a citrus tree as well. So they can grow pretty well in containers like a lot of other citrus trees. So this one over here, I've had for about 18 months growing in this pot and it was about half the size when I first got it. So it's doubled in size in the last 18 months. There's a couple of things going on which I wanted to talk about a little bit later on. Um, but I've also got this tree over here which is still growing in its nursery pot. I just bought it recently and it's a beautiful specimen. But this is of course needing to be transplanted into a larger container and that's how I'm going to be growing these. All right you guys, so this is our container here and I think this is like mostly out of frame. So hopefully you guys can see the top if I do that. It is a fairly decent tree, quite large, and so I've used quite a large pot as well. But what I would recommend is that you do find a pot that is quite big anyway, because these are a fruiting plant, they do require a good amount of nutrients to actually fruit and produce well. In terms of the pot that I've got, this is a 50 litre plastic container. You don't have to use plastic, you can just use whatever you have or whatever you want to use. Uh, it doesn't really matter. The main thing to look out for is that it has good drainage, so this has lots of good drainage holes all around the bottom of it, because these don't like sitting in a lot of moisture. The only other thing to consider with your pot size is that if you are going to be moving it in and around because of winter like moving it either indoors or under a sheltered area it's best to have it in a pot that you can manage so this one is one that you can sort of pick up and move around a little bit whereas if you put it in too gigantic of a pot then it's going to be a bit of a mission. So in terms of the type of soil that you use you do want something that is free draining so I wouldn't recommend using like topsoil or garden soil anything like that because in a container situation it's just going to compact and it's not going to allow free drainage it's just really not going to be good for your tree. So you need something that is free draining. Best thing to use is a premium potting mix. So make sure you don't get a really cheap crappy one, get a good one that's going to provide some good nutrients in your pot and be a bit more long lasting. So I've got a premium potting mix here, it's free draining and it's um, it's going to provide all those good things. This does have an organic slow release fertilizer in it as well, so that's going to help things out. So this mix does look pretty free draining. If you've got a mix that you think you might need to add something else to because it's not free draining enough, you can always add a little bit of cactus mix because that has really good free draining properties. So I am also gonna add these citrus and fruit pellets that I bought. These have like lots of kind of organic materials in them like chicken manure, sheep manure, some seaweed extracts and things like that. I'm just gonna dig this through to add some extra nutrition into the soil and that will hopefully help benefit this guy, but also is still keeping the soil nice and free draining as well. So as for potting this tree up, it's pretty straightforward. I'm just planting it at the same depth that it was in its original pot, and then just packing the soil down around it fairly well so that it's nice and sturdy and doesn't get blown around by the wind. I usually don't fill the soil right up to the very brim of the pot because it does make it kind of hard to water the plant. So it's good to have it just down a little bit from the top of the pot. The last thing I'm going to do is just add a little layer of mulch and that's just basically to keep the soil cool and evenly moist and stop the surface roots really drying out. I'm just going to go grab some water so I can water this tree in and I'm actually going to add a little bit of seaweed fertilizer to the water as well which helps with transplant shock. Usually you'd give this to your plants before you transplant them but this will still be good for it and should get it going pretty well. 
One thing to remember with watering these plants as well is not to overwater them. It can be really easy to do, especially if you've got them maybe inside for the winter because they don't dry out very quickly at all. And even outside, if you leave them in the rain, it can become an issue, particularly if you use these things here, these sources. So I'm not going to put one of these under my plants because the issue with them is that once they fill up with water, that water is constantly getting sucked up into the pot and into the soil. And it means that these plants just stay too wet. It's not really what you want. You want these to be able to drain freely and any excess moisture to be able to drain out of the bottom of the pot. They can be helpful though if maybe you're going away for a little while and um, you might not be around to water your plants in the hot summer. So you can put one of these below your plants and fill it with water and that will just keep the pot evenly moist while you're away and um, that should be totally fine. But you just don't want to leave these under your plants for long periods of time where it's going to keep that soil too wet. In terms of fertilizing, I have read that finger limes can tolerate fairly nutrient poor soils, but the thing with these plants is that they're grafted onto another citrus rootstock, and those rootstocks do do well in a nutrient rich environment. And although finger limes may tolerate nutrient poor soils, you're better to give them a good nutrient dense soil that's got some good stuff in there for them to feed off because it does take a lot of energy to flower and fruit and go through all of that. Don't forget as well, because they are in a pot, they've really only got access to the nutrients you give them. It's literally contained to this little container here. So keep them fertilized. You can use a normal citrus fertilizer if you like. You can give them some liquid fertilizers too. Just do it through the growing season, maybe not in the winter because it encourages them to put on fresh growth and then that means it's got more chance of being frosted because it's kind of young fresh growth. This tree here does have a few issues. I haven't actually fertilized it in ages or done really anything with it at all. It has been winter but you'll see if you look close up that a lot of the leaves have yellowing happening to them. That's quite common with container grown citrus and so one thing that often causes that is a magnesium deficiency. So you can use Epsom salts. I'm going to be doing that today. Epsom salts is also magnesium sulfate. And basically you can just dissolve some of this in some water and then water the plant with it. So I've got some of it here. I'm just going to put a bit on it. Now because these are in a container as well, one thing that is important to note is not to overdo it because if you give them too much, it's kind of hard to undo that. You're better to give them a bit less than you think rather than too much. So I just used a teaspoon in this uh, watering can here and just watered it down. And if I decide that it needs a little bit more in a little while, I can still do that. But it's hopefully just going to help with these yellowing of the leaves here. And you can also just like give them a top dressing of compost or things like that. Just other ways to get nutrients down into the plants. These haven't flowered or fruited yet. They're still, I guess, fairly young plants. But yeah, hopefully in the future I'll be able to show you guys what the fruits look like when these do eventually produce. Last thing to mention with finger limes is that they do require a lot of sun. They are a citrus and citruses need at least six hours of sun. That's minimum. If you can provide more than that, that's better as well. You can protect them from the afternoon sun if you think it's a bit too harsh and that will hopefully help them out if it's kind of getting a bit too hot for them. If you do need to overwinter them inside, try put them in a sunny windowsill or a sunny window that does get a good amount of sun throughout the day so they stay nice and healthy and they should hopefully grow well for you if you keep them evenly moist and don't let them fully fully dry out. So that pretty much does it for growing finger limes in containers. I hope that's kind of helped you guys and maybe inspired you to have a go at it yourself if you haven't grown these before. They're really interesting looking citrus just with you know the size of the leaves are so tiny in comparison to normal citrus and these little spines on them as well are pretty gnarly but I think they're kind of cool. If you're interested in other kind of unusual fruits and things like that do check out some of the other videos I have. Subscribe down below if you want to see more in the future and yeah hope you have a good rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. All right bye guys.